this is the breaker here we already have the plywood already set up so he's gonna rip this thing completely off the electrician is gonna take these boxes off and rewire the house remember we had the last time the problem on balance the house is on balance because you have more loads on the other side and this box is just added this there's gonna be disregarding this and these are the grid tight inverters here guys and they are doing awesome job and they're gonna be going bye bye okay that's gonna be another episode again. It's evening here, uh, approximately. What's the time now, Dean? You remember? Um, it is five thirty. Five thirty in the evening. So, uh, one inverter is bringing thirty something thing here and nineteen. So we, the house is doing well. The grid inver grid tight inverter have served him really well. I don't know what you wanna say about them. The inverters, um, what do you think? Is a good experience with these guys? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, my last bill, looking at my bill, um, compared to what I used one year ago, because it's been a year this month since I went live with these, and depending on how much sun, snow, and, and cloud cover, it's been anywhere from, say, 15 percent a month savings to uh, as much as a 20 almost 25 percent just on my few little uh, panels I have and uh, the way my uh, thing is set up here so I have made savings significant savings so he's a 1530 you have up there right mm -hmm. okay he has a 1.530 kilowatts of um, uh, panels so it's a good thing guys if you don't have the batteries and you can go with the grid tight inverters. But Dave decided to go because the grid tight inverters, they're a good deal. It's a good thing. You can see one of them it has a 900 watts of solar. And the other one has a 630 on the solar. So this battery is, uh, battery is going to be series. Uh, sorry, the panel is going to be series. So for him to utilize the entire uh, 1.530 kilowatt of power. And with these grid tight inverters as well, he can able, he would have able to use the batteries coming from this guy and all the way up here. That was the plan so that he can tie them onto the grid tight inverters. But the bad part of it, the disadvantage, that's the word, the disadvantage of it, Dave would have been, if the power goes down, he had a panel, he had the batteries, he can feed back to the house. Yeah. He can feed back to the house because the grid tile inverters have to see the grid before he push the power. I've seen some crazy videos, someone trying to put some other stuff while they want to use um, other stuff to power the house or whatever. It's going to bag feed and cause problem to your inverters. But like a generator, they want to start a generator so that they can see like a grid. It's going to go back and hit your generator big time and ruin it and cause problems. So these ones cannot do anything without the grid. They have to see the grid before they work. And being said that, Dave, I explained the uh, advantages and disadvantages about it. And he decided, so, so what's the deal? So I said, I'm upgrading some of my equipment here, if you don't mind. And they've said, I would love to have them. I told them all the advantages and disadvantages, what this stuff can do, what this stuff cannot do, and what the other thing can do while the other thing can do anything. Because the independent system, which is the off-grid system, doesn't need anything. Doesn't need anything right now. So right now, the phone has just kicked. You can tell his phone is 120. This is nothing here. It's 66 and it's 600 something. So it tells you 700 is coming out. This is from the grid because of the sensors. You can read. So his furnace is a 120. That's the good thing about it. These are all the advantages and disadvantages. I was telling Dave, he can run his furnace mm -hmm. on battery yes. with solar. So he can do an automatic uh, the transfer switch that's going to be over the, the Reliance. So can just switch the grid off because the Reliance has a generator and a line. So when you switch to line, it's going to be the, the, the grid. If you go in generator, instead of generator, it's going to be solar for him. 
So he can run, potentially can run his entire house with the solar system, the batteries, except this guy here, which um, this is an on-demand water system, which he likes before, but now he's going to be given some piece of headache. So what it is, you got a filtration here, you can see all kind of little residue here because of the thing is working well. It's catching all the bugs or other things not to come um, put some residue inside that machine on demand. This is the, the name. It's really powerful. You can turn this dial, you can set how many degrees Fahrenheit you want to, or by turning just the water. And you can see. So, um, Dave, the only thing, he cannot run this. This is run over about 6 kilowatts, something like that. It's a 80 amps. It takes from the grid, right, Dave? Yes, it's an 80 amp. Is uh, it? And it bothers John something fierce because it sucks so much power. Yeah. So he can able to run this in the near future if he has a two or, or three of those Magnum, which doesn't worth it. So he already have a plan. So that's going to be another series of videos. He might probably go um, uh, propane or whatever it is. Well, and uh, this this is going to last me for a while because I got to get this other kind of up and running and paid off first. Mm -hmm. But somewhere down the road, I might want to change this to a natural gas one. But the plus side with these on-demand water heaters, especially up in this area up in Minnesota, <coughs> the, the, the shelf life of most of the tank water heaters, well, the biggest pros and cons. The pros for this is, look, look how much space you're, you're saving by putting it up there. The, the gas ones are just as big, and so you save so much space it's phenomenal. Uh, the other uh, plus is the length of time you can use them. The average length for those tank ones because of residue and slag and things that build up in the tank is anywhere from seven to maybe ten years tops. So every seven to ten years you're buying a whole nother tank and a whole nother tank and a whole nother tank. Big tank. This one uh, usually, you can get if you if you treat them right and you take care of them. I heard someone talking that you might be able to keep these for like 20 years. So instead of putting in three different, three or four different water heaters in 20 years, you have one. So and I like it. And the other good thing again, it doesn't work unless you want to demand the water. I'm tell you, turn on the water for hot water. You're not making any hot water. So because the other ones look just like this. It's gonna stand. This is a water softener. Yep. That's how tall, and you just have to keep up all the time to keep um, uh, keep the temperature. You know, when the temperature drop and the, the 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 gas, natural gas, kicks in, the flame is always there to keep the water. Or if you have electric one always turn the trigger and warm the water keep the water temperature to a certain level all the time this one doesn't do that doesn't care till dave wants the water instantaneous but it's pulling about 80 amps that's a lot of power yes it is on on 240 it's not 120 it's a 240 that's a lot of power about six kilowatts something like that so if dave want to do this he has to have through two um uh, magnum which is uh is going to give him about eight kilowatts of power then he can run this boy the thing is he can't run the entire house anymore because of this one guy is putting a lot of power and he has to you know prioritize what and what's supposed to be run at a certain time absolutely now so, the other bonus part with one of these whether it's a gas or electric how many parents out there give your kids a bath or a shower and then it's your turn to take one and you have no hot water, so you're taking a cold shower. Huh. It sucks. Not with this. Okay. So, there's that added bonus. So this is the thing, and great Dave already understand this. So we're going back to the breaker over there, which um, uh, uh, finish up with the greater inverters. This one old setup is going to go bye-bye. The way it is right now, we're just going to yank everything outside. And the way I brought it before, and that's how it's gonna set up. That's the new breaker box over there. It's 100 amp there. It comes with about, uh, I think, six breakers yes. that they already gave him for free, which is a uh, square of these. It comes with the package. Check with Menards or a local store. Well, uh, Menards 
has that good deal going on right now. I call Dave and say, hey, maybe you want to grab one of those boxes. And uh, it comes with the breakers. It comes with about 230 amps double, double pole breakers. And he had a, a 20 amps, three of the 20 amps, two of the 30 amps double pro, and uh, four of the uh, 20 amp breakers in that thing. So he has plenty of breakers here, which um, um, they gonna add to fill up this entire box if he have to, and another box over there. So this is the system. I just have to come back and remove this one old box, like the way I brought it. It's gonna go bye bye, so we're gonna trade some of these in uh, breakers right here. But since these breakers are even smaller, there's a 30 amp and a 20 amp because of different array, and uh, I might have just uh, bring another breakers for Dave that um, the suit for is uh, um, the panel, which is the the MMP 250-30D to have the 63 amp breaker for the um, um, Midnight Classic. That's the 63 out from the battery side. Plus, it's gonna be maybe a 30 amp on the, uh, can do the calculation, about 30 amps into coming from the uh, uh, array. So we have them 30 and a 63. So it's all done. So just a matter of uh, giving a 63 amp breaker and a 30 amp break or whatever it is so we are we, we, we squared out everything's gonna be really fine and this grid side inverters gonna be on it's gonna be ready for for sale if anyone within the area whatever I can ship these guys and you can go ahead and purchase them and it's gonna come with a full panels into this and it's gonna be about 240 watt so 340 watt solar panels the uh, uh, 2018 modules, parallel, very good panels. Um, it's a 51.3 volt that's going to feed into this. So if you want four, I can put four panels into that with these guys. Then, so that's it. So two on this and two on that. So if you have six, whatever, six. 340 times 2, that gives you 600 and something, 80, something like that, mm -hmm. 680 on each uh, inverter at, at a 51.3 volt because these guys can only go up to 60, uh, 65, so you don't want to keep it at 65, you want to keep it on the low threshold. Dave is running, the other one is kind of a little bit higher voltage, the other one is kind of a little bit because of different panels there. But... They think he's happy with that. Well, yeah. It's certainly happy. well this last year. Yep. And I think he's going to miss them. Well, yes, I will. Because yeah. he like poking those buttons. You can see, poke them till, you see the plastic is all bumpy over there. Keep poking them all the time. So no more pokey poke is done. It's done. So, um, okay. There's the next project right here. You can see is a four hot cable. So this is the one that is going to be, it's about 13 foot. Something like that? 15 foot. Like 15. That. So we're going to cut this in the middle to get this uh, thing connected for the batteries right here. And the system is going to be mounted somewhere here. So we don't know yet how much cable. So my advice, I think we're just going to probably leave it the way it is. See that thing, how heavy it is? Just like pulling a, an anaconda. That's how heavy that thing is. Yeah. Did you have it marked? No, I didn't. I didn't. This, because remember, the um, the thing is down. The uh, the 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 back panel is long. It's all the way down. It's gonna be down below. Yeah, something like that. So, so if you hold it right there, how much? Then then bend it. Then we're gonna make um, our interconnect. But so far so good. Maybe we can just leave it the way it is right now because we don't wanna make mistake. Because these wires are expensive, you know, you don't want to just cut them and just, you're going to ruin them. We don't want any excess wire hanging all the way because they are heavy and we have to use some tag or whatever thing. We can put them, tag them to hold the wire from not yanking off all the way on the inverters. And um, we are done at this time. 
All right, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for being with the Grillmeister, Dave. We're always happy to have you guys, and Grillmeister is really happy all the time to come to the channel. So today, you got an attention on you guys again. All right, till then, subscribe and share to the video. Thanks, bye.